So you buy a personal computer, you open it up to find out what's inside of it, and you find out there's nothing inside of it, just a bunch of empty slots. What kind of boards can you buy to add functionality to your computer? We'll help you answer that question today as we take a look at add-on boards on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, we're talking about add-on boards today, and believe it or not, that little guy is an add-on board. It's, of course, so small, the thing is actually called a charge card. It's made by a company in Canada. And what you do with this thing is you put it into your 286 machine, and it lets you access extended memory, even though you're operating in the real mode. When we talk about add-on boards, there are really two strategies out there in the marketplace in the IBM world, where you have open machines, and you can put in these boards. Then there's the Macintosh world with a closed box, and you really can't change it at all. Has either one of these strategies turned out to be better in the long run? Well, Stuart, they both work. In Apple's case, the Macintosh, it's a tightly controlled environment. The app application writer can always assume, for example, there's high-res graphics there, mm -hmm. there's a mouse there, and that's good. In the IBM PC case, uh, software has to account for, say, four different kinds of uh, display devices, uh, four or five different mouse types, or maybe no right. mouse at all. And so it makes it more difficult to write the application in that case. But for the consumer, the advantage is you can build your own computer system out of boards like this, and it can be very customized to exactly what you need. Gary, that's what we'll do today. We'll take a look at the most important kinds of add-on boards. We'll see the new generation of multifunction memory boards. We'll take a look at a VGA graphics card. We'll see the new Intel inboard 386. And we'll see a board that turns your PC into a fax machine. Now, most people who buy add-on boards buy them through a mail order house. So we start today by visiting the biggest of those mail order houses, Janeco Electronics, right near here in Belmont, California. Jameco Electronics in Belmont, California, is a mature company, at least in Silicon Valley terms. The company was founded in 1974 in a garage, and it grew up with the computer industry, providing components, boards, and parts for what was then a very different market. Say before 84, people were buying their systems, they were happy with them. But as their needs grew, and this computer, computer craze grew, I think they needed, they saw a need for expandability, say like in RAM cards or multifunction cards, or say adding on a hard disk drive along with a controller card. Add-in boards are among the most popular items in Jameco's catalog, with sales sometimes increasing tenfold in a year, especially in the case of color graphics cards. The apparently insatiable desire for more memory and speed has made board sales an important part of Jameco's income. The introduction of new technology, like the IBM PS2, is not of much concern to the company, at least for now. What that does for us, it actually helps us out, because the PS2, okay, their price may be way up here. Features are fantastic. They have all, you know, all these different gadgets, new drives, new speeds, and so forth. But then our aftermarket for, say, like the XT compatibles and AT compatibles actually increases because the people are interested in using you know, a lower end product paying a lower end price, but still with some decent features like basically all you need for computing. You just don't have the latest. At least part of the reason for the success of the add-in card has to be the drop in price. One of Jameco's first boards was a card that provided 80 columns of text on the Apple II monitor. Its price then? $395. Today, it's all yours for $40. Joining us in the studio now is Rick Rolfe. He's product marketing manager with AST Research and sitting next to Rick Buzz Roberts, VGA product manager with Paradise Systems. Gary? Rick, AST has been in the add-on board business for quite a number of years. Uh, what 
What do people really ask for in terms of add-ons? Well, the obvious ones are ports, additional memory, the things that we've been really well known for. Six Pack Plus is one of the best examples of that type of product. But lately we've been seeing requests for additional things. Communication boards are really coming on big for us as well, so our Datacom group is doing very mm -hmm. well. And we've also expanded beyond simple enhancement boards to building our own. PCs, the ASD Premium 286, which is the machine we'll be using today for the demo. Okay, now you're going to be showing some, uh, what, extended memory? Expanded, expanded memory, expanded memory. actually. <laughs> okay. We're going to be talking about expanded memory. I would memory. explain, I mean, people are yeah. confused. What's the difference in extended memory and expanded memory? Okay, extended memory is a type of memory that's available in 286 or 386 machines, which have a larger address space than do the original PCs, the 8088 processor machines. It's memory that's addressable only in protected mode on the 286, and it can be addressed in uh, 386 protected mode as well on a 386 mm -hmm. machine. Expanded memory, on the other hand, is an additional type of add-in memory which is swapped into the conventional memory space of the computer, whether it's an 8088 or a 286. That's to overcome that 640K limitation. Exactly, right. Mm -hmm. right. It fools the computer into being able to deal with more memory than it otherwise would be able to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about this board now. Sure. What we're going to be showing with the Premium 286 is an expanded memory computer, but we wanted to emphasize that it's not simply a function of the computer itself we're using. We also have boards that span the entire range of processors and bus types. For mm -hmm. example, for a, an 8088 machine, a PC, XT, or even the Model 30, the uh, 8086, there's mm -hmm. the Rampage 2, which is a 2 megabyte EEMS, EMS 4.0 memory board. For 286-based machines and compatibles, we have the Rampage 286, and for the Model 50 and 60, for the PS2 line, we have the Rampage 2 286. All three of them provide two megabytes. Can you give us yeah, a yeah, kind of before and after on. demonstration sure. of using the board? What we'd like to show here is what this can do for the average user. People have become dependent upon things like RAM disks, print spooters, mm -hmm. RAM mm -hmm. resident utilities, and these things can use a lot of memory. Right here we have uh, a RAM disk, since we don't have any expanded memory yet, it's in conventional memory. And I'm going to load up Sidekick Plus, which is one of the more popular mm -hmm. add-in type of products. And when you bring in the system memory size from Sidekick, you'll notice that it's showing 258K of hard disk space being used as virtual memory because there is no expanded memory available. So that takes a while for it to come in. Now we're going to load up 1, 2, 3, and we're going to work on our budget. Now, we have a RAM disk in there for overlays for files. We have our RAM resident utility Sidekick Plus, And what we have now is an error. There's just not enough not memory enough left memory. in the machine. And indeed, when you do worksheet status, you see that there's a total of 14 bytes left mm -hmm. and there's no expanded mm -hmm. memory available. So what I'm going to do now is to reboot the machine, enable the expanded memory, and then show how you can, by using expanded memory, use all the same utilities that you were just using and still preserve your mm -hmm. conventional memory for use by applications and programs. First thing that happens is the expanded memory manager will come up, initialize the memory, and now all that RAM disk is going out into expanded memory. Sidekick Plus, when you bring it up, will show that it's got 68K of conventional memory being used, but it's no longer using mm -hmm. the hard disk as virtual memory. It's using 800K of expanded memory. So now, when you bring up your application program, Lotus123, and you load your budget, it will come up. It won't show the error mm -hmm. message. And it uh, takes a few seconds longer. But when you show worksheet status, it does show you 315K of conventional, as well as 276K of expanded memory still available. And of course, your sidekick is still available for you. Right. So you can do a sort of multitasking with this, and this is a very rudimentary way of doing it. It also enables you to, oops, excuse me. It also enables you to uh, use the program on top of another. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. So. Okay, go. Would you slide the keyboard sure. over now to uh, to Buzz? What about compatibility problems here with software on these boards? Right? There's really not that big of an issue with compatibility. It, it's designed to run under most DOS systems and there's very few programs that cause any problems of any sort with expanded memory. The one uh, thing that's come up that's trying to alleviate some of the confusion in the industry about uh, expanded memory types is now the unified specification, mm -hmm. the 4.0. At first there was EMS 3.2, which was designed to provide you a way to move data, but didn't give you a way to move program code, so you couldn't execute more than one program at a time. Double EMS then came out, and it was an enhancement to the original EMS specification. After a couple of years, the EMS 4.0 was agreed on, and it essentially calls for an underlying hardware platform identical to Double EMS with a different tweak mm -hmm. to it here and okay. there, nothing mm -hmm. that major. The important thing being that now that 4.0 compatibility is coming out, 
people are providing 4.0 drivers with underlying 3.2 hardware. And it really doesn't provide you the sorts of things that 4.0 hardware yeah. can do. So it would be in the best interest of uh, someone who's contemplating going out and buying an expanded memory board to know exactly what mm -hmm. kind of hardware mm -hmm. they're getting underlying that. Buzz, we want to turn to graphics cards now, and that's Paradise's business. What do you have there? Uh, I have brought with me the Paradise VGA Plus card today. And the, this is the card that is uh, based on the IBM new video standard that came along with the introduction of the PS2 family mm -hmm. of computers last year. Give us an example of uh, what VGA looks like. Well, VGA gives you uh, higher resolution and more colors on screen than the previous display standard. And uh, I'm bringing up now under Windows uh, a few windows on the screen showing our 800 by 600 graphics. Now this is above and beyond IBM's standard 640 by 480 graphics, mm -hmm. and this provides you over 60% more on-screen um, information. So that's an example of a Windows-type application. Now we're going into a CAD-type application. Mm -hmm. Again, this is uh, 800 by 600 graphics, and uh, this is running AutoCAD. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to see? Now we'll see the uh, world-famous <laughs> uh, spaceship Columbia here. Uh -huh. And this again, with 800 by 600 resolution, you're able to get that much more information on the screen. And uh, as always, that helps in your editing capabilities. Mm -hmm. Now we'll turn to text application. This is our 132 column WordStar Professional running right now. And with the VGA character font, it's a much more readable type mm -hmm. of application here. Yeah. And again, when you can see 132 columns at one time, it's that much easier to edit and you can create a better document. Now under GEM, we will be running Ventura Publisher, a desktop application. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, this ties text and graphics all together. And uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of information on the screen. Again, this is our 800 by 600. And uh, we provide this with a driver with our card. Okay, can you just show us some uh, pretty pictures that would take advantage of the VGA? Sure, that's uh, one of the big things with VGA is the number of colors on screen at one time. And I'm going to show a few slides here in our 320 by 200 uh, graphics resolution with 256 colors on screen out of a possible mm. 256,000. Okay, that's great. Well, that's Buzz, nice. Rick, thank you very much. Now, when you think of add-on boards, you tend to think of the PC-compatible world, but of course, with the Macintosh 2, you've got slots, and people are coming out with add-on boards for the Mac. Wendy Woods has a report. According to new air safety rules mandated by the FAA and Congress, almost all commercial aircraft will need some form of onboard collision avoidance system within five years. But collision avoidance systems are expensive, up to $200,000 per plane, and there's a need for a cheaper alternative. Well, believe it or not, an add-in board for the Macintosh 2 is helping design it. It's called TV Producer, and it's being used by Radar Data Systems in Burlingame, California, to design a visual system that displays current air traffic around a plane with an aeronautical chart or map of the ground. TV Producer, from Computer Friends of Portland, Oregon, allows the two displays to be superimposed. In this case, one of them, the map, is coming from a video cassette. The actual technology that will go into making RDS's low-cost collision avoidance system is proprietary and will not involve use of TV producer. But the card is making it possible to create a demonstration of the ultimate product and to help the programmers choose colors and on-screen design before committing them to silicon. We can get a good feel for, um, for a lot of these things early on in the project. Uh, 